Hey everybody, this is uh, Jim at SP500Chart.com. It's about 11.30 Eastern Time on uh, Tuesday evening. We're going to take a look at the chart as of the close on June 25th, 2013. I want to just tell you real quickly that this uh, website and this video are for educational purposes only and nothing stated at the site or in the video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research. And you may need to make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed professional, financial professional. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. Going to make this pretty quick so I can get this published and to you. Um, basically, uh, thought we'd have an update today. It's about time. I mean, we had a, a couple of significantly down days. So you would expect there'd be at least a bounce. <laughs> And interesting to note that um, this consolidation pattern that's bounded by these two green lines made its full, um, by, by, any, by any stretch, by any way you measure it, it made that full target. Now, <clears throat> I had adjusted this bottom line because it looked like this might have been the bottom back here on the 21st. <clears throat> But at least there is a, uh, a short-term bottom, it looks like, on the 24th. So we came up uh, late yesterday, then uh, back-tested this red line, which is interesting because this red line is defined only by these three days of trading back on the 10th, 11th, and 12th. But it came back, back-tested it, broke out over it, and then uh, today headed up. But I'll be honest with you, I'm still expecting resistance around 1600. And we're going to take a look at the last two days of trading and I'll show you why I think that that may also be in the cards. But basically, make a long story short, we got two areas of resistance. We have this line at about 1600, 1598, 1600, something like that. Then we have this rising line right here that has not even been close to being back tested. So I'm looking at it like this. Oops, I didn't mean to move that. I'm looking at it like this. A move over 1600 should result in a continuation to back test this uh, lower uh, line of support that should now act as resistance. Um, now, let me tell you why I'm a little cautious about what we have saw uh, late yesterday and today. And I think you're probably going to read my mind. Now, let, first, let's, let's look at the positives. The positives are, if we use some of these peaks over here on the 20th, and then this high that was uh, up here at, at about uh, 1598 on the 21st, if that's a trend line that's worth considering, well, we're over that. So that's good. Okay? So that, that's a positive thing. But what I'm not real happy about is the general shape of this rally and you you probably know exactly where I'm going it looks a bit wedgy uh, like an ascending wedge and typically these result in another downward leg um, I'm not saying necessarily a significant a significant downward leg I don't mean touching off a new move down another hundred points because usually what these mean is that you will come back to to retest the levels that were in place when this pattern started to form. So it, it's possible that um, that we could be setting up a, a parallel channel, but we would have to bounce really strong on this bottom line and head up and get 
up to 1600 or over 1600 for that to be the case. But that's not the line that, that I see on the chart right now. This is it. So guys, I'm, I'm saying that uh, it looked like we would bounce down here around 1576. Indeed, we did. Um, but I'm not seeing uh, signs of real strong upward momentum here. This is looking like we're in a rising wedge and we would expect resistance at about 1600 anyway. So I'm just saying be on the lookout for, uh, for possibly getting up to this uh, 1600 level tomorrow and let's see what happens if the S&P gets up there. I would look for some resistance. Now, again, it is possible that we, are, that we would be forming some type of reversal pattern under 1600 where 1600 could act as the neckline. That hasn't happened yet. So right now, uh, I think I'll just uh, call, call it as, as, as we see it for, for just at this moment in time. And that is, it's nice to see a little rally, but it's looking like it's in a wedge pattern, which usually does not, um, does not bring about a, a long and lasting rally that usually sets up um, a downward move to some extent. So uh, resistance, if we can get over 1600 resistance, then I think we come up to, um, to this uh, 1620s, high 1620s level. But uh, right now, eh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what happens. One other thing I want to point out, and that is we had that gap down on the 24th and you can see where, where maybe we could uh, encounter some gap resistance as well. So there are a couple reasons to, to maybe be a little circumspect about this move that we saw today. But if, the, if this can continue and, and, it can, and it continue with a renewed vigor and get over 1600, then I think uh, this, the, uh, this green line getting tagged from the underside uh, is, is likely to be in the cards. Guys, that's your video for uh, June 25th, 2013. Thank you for watching. Let's see what the markets bring us tomorrow.